You see, church, church should not be terrifying. Children should not be afraid to attend a church service. <laughs> hey. Church has to be the most peaceful place. Where you can sit there and you can actually feel that something is happening to me. I'm sitting here, but something is happening to me. But with some of us, some of these big people, they're not even sure. Because some of us, once we see a person like that, we lose control. We want to start with him. <laughs> so the whole world will know that he was delivered by Makandiwa. No. When your anointing is not yet mature, you will keep on inviting quality people big people. They will just come just by invitation. But they will not continue coming. That will be the problem now. So gifts, prophesying and so on. I know most of you, you think once you start prophesying you get thousands of people coming. That is not the case. Once I start delivering people, you get thousands of people coming. That is not the case. It is not the case. It is not the case. It's a, it's, it's, you, you, can have, you can have a conference, you can invite people. Sometimes we, we do that when we're doing posters. Bring the sick and so on and you have thousands of people coming. But are they going to be kept? No. Do you know you can have 90 people? I can have 5,000 people. And yet you have the biggest ministry. <laughs> when God is to come down and do a census, do you know that even in Israel, when they were counting people, they would not count you if you are not working. <laughs> even Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible says, when he came and he besieged Jerusalem, he took everyone into captivity except the poorest people of the land. Even Joseph, when he went for the census, it's because he was, he was a worker. He was employed. It was for the sake of the taxation. You can only tax people that are working. So I can have 5,000 people that are not doing anything, and you can have 90 people and they are all employed. That ministry is bigger than what I have. All I'm doing is busy counting people, but there's nothing happening. Quality is very important. That has to be your focus. That has to be your focus. That has to be your focus. I'm spending much time on that one because I think it's the last question. That has to be your focus. You grow into ministry, move into stages. You do things today, you do things tomorrow, and then next week, you have to bring in a different approach. You have to bring in a different approach. Then you look at the people again and you can see, now I think there is a change. There's more maturity on these people. Why? Because your approach is the best. I used to have people coming to our house. would wake up in the morning, maybe just sleep for maybe two hours. There are people queuing there for deliverance. We are praying for people. She worked and she worked and she worked. Who would do that? Serving God's people. And when you are doing that, there is nothing that can stop you. Even a sermon cannot stop you. Even another preacher, you will think he's trying to persecute you or he's criticizing you. You will not even stop. Nothing, once you start doing that, nothing can stop you until you mature yourself. Then you will have to tell yourself, no. 
something is wrong here. <laughs> something is wrong here. That's where you see Jethro coming in and advising Moses, you can't do this, you will die. Find other people that can do this. Relax. <laughs> I son in law, relax, take it easy. Oh, what are you doing? You're trying to criticize? No, 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 no. Take it easy. And that advice, it saved him. How can God be burning in a bush and still not advise Moses? You can be used by God, you can be <laughs> seeing visions, and yet angels will never advise you on some of these issues. Take it easy. Take it easy. Try by all means to own that ministry. You will have people, maybe in your ministry, even if they get sick, they will still have faith that they will recover. Even if you pray for them, they don't recover, they will still continue coming to church. They love you the way you are. If anything happens to them, they will not question your prophetic grace and say, ah, how come we were just coming from the service and the man of God was there and he never said anything about it. How can this thing happen to me? You will never hear them saying that. Because they are mature people. But the moment you start giving them every time and they know that you see everything, you are creating problems for yourself. Even if you are a true prophet and you can see everything, declare before your people that I don't see everything. Uh, am I talking to someone? Do this. If you are here and you are a prophet, openly tell your people that I don't see everything. And by so doing, you are not just being humble, you are telling the truth. There is no prophet under the sun who sees everything. That's a lie. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's a lie. I said it some few days ago, that focus creates blindness. When God starts talking to you and giving you information, there is a moment when you focus on what God is showing you. And focus creates blindness. When you focus on one thing, you can't see the rest of the things that are happening. The more you see, the more you can see. So if you tell your people that by the time anything happens, you don't have to struggle to convince them. That I had already seen it, but I couldn't find ways of telling you and so No. It's because you, 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 <laughs> you elevated yourself to a place. In that place, you cannot even maintain it. And if you tell people that, even God himself will do something that will disgrace you. God himself, you being a true prophet, God will do something to just mess you up and to prove you wrong. Because now you are in, in, in competition with God. He will prove that there are certain things that you can't see. And what do you do now? What do you do? So even your members, if they know that you can't see everything, at least they will start praying. They will pray, knowing that, no, 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 if I'm not careful here. Because... <laughs> Some of them, they go home, they sleep. They wake up, they sleep again. They don't pray, they don't read the Bible because they belong to a man who sees everything. You are killing them. So I'll come back to that. Thank you so much. That, that was a wonderful question. Okay, I think, I think we are done for today. We have to come back and continue on the same topic, the ministry of healing, and we are blending it with uh, the ministry of deliverance, how to go about it. But I tell you, every time when we move from one segment into another segment or into another topic, that previous one 
you have to be rest assured that you already have it. It will be functional. It will be there, present, in full force. Don't hesitate to minister life to people, healing to people. When you meet a person in a bad condition, don't even think even for two seconds. Straight away, go to the person. Tell the person, listen, I don't care the situation. What I'm telling you is what is happening now. You are free in the name of Jesus. Don't even allow the person to leave the place. Tell him, check yourself now. Yes. And see. This is something that is already given to all of us. We can do that. Child of God, you can do this. You can do this. Do you want to continue seeing the hand of God stretched through you? and helping people stand on your feet. Let me just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are an awesome God, all-powerful and all-knowing. Oh, Jesus. No one and nothing can be compared to you. We are in this place to be saturated in your presence. And we are very much aware that being in a place like this, something is definitely happening to us. In the name of Jesus. Even before we can start changing other people's lives, our own lives are being transformed right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm walking out of this place to exercise your authority. You have given me a mandate to subdue, to rule, to dominate. And that's what I'm going out there to start doing from today. I meet a situation, I dominate it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your right hand. Just lift up your right hand. You are awesome, God. You are awesome. You see, we are not in a prophetic service where I have to be calling out people. But you know, I can sense it. It is, it is so heavy that uh, we... The, Spirit is, the Holy Spirit is confirming a number like nine to me, like there are nine people that are actually receiving this grace in a very serious way. The ministry of healing is going to be outstanding. These people will begin to see what they've never seen before. Your grace, your ministry, your anointing cannot be ignored. It cannot be ignored. There is no sickness, no demon can resist this kind of grace. Oh, Jesus. Not only are you going to heal people, you will heal places. You will walk into an environment and it is charged up. Become a vessel unto honor. Become a vessel unto honor. I pray that this grace will come upon you and it will stay. Nothing shall remove it, nothing shall take it away from you. No matter the challenges that you go through, this grace in you, you shall become one. In the name of Jesus. And not only shall you heal the sick, you shall become the healing power of God. In Jesus' mighty name.
as you go out there, experience some miracles. Go and see God working through you. And start enjoying your ministry. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Start thanking him now. Thank you for watching Minister's Material. Join us again next time for yet another inspirational teaching from Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa.